Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to do another episode of checking out one of your guys' solar systems. So today's system is from the user Lion12 in Discord, so massive thank you to them for sending this in. With all this said and done, let's hop straight into it. So their system is called the Raster System, so let's go ahead and get it ready. Should be in here for us to go, there he is. Alright, let's see what we have got. Okay, oh, taking loading time, that usually means there's big stuff. Right, let's see what we got. Lots of ring particles normally. Right. Let's have a look-see. Okay. Ooh. All right. So, the Rastus system is located roughly 18,500 light years away from Earth. It's a G-type star for a wide variety of planets and moons. The system is almost entirely natural made. I place a large range of objects at random before playing the simulation and seeing how they settle. Uh, okay. After one million simulated years... One million? Oh, yeah, he actually has as well. Um... I managed to clean up the system and adjust some orbits through predictions of what would happen eventually. Most of you will see is all natural except for the fact I purposely invented to at least have one Earth-like world. Play with directional studio flashlight for the best experience. The system is fully playable. It's had a million years of running evolution. So let's see what we have got here. So first of all, we've got this one here. Oh, the star itself as well. Rasta is the main star of the system. It is larger and more luminous than our sun and it's all... Uh, Larger, more massive than the sun, it's also more luminous. Cool. Right, first, the objects we've got Cobra here. The first planet of the system is a metal rich body, mainly dark grey coloration and a very thin atmosphere. I like the way it looks actually. All the craters, the details, looks good. Okay. Next up, we've got Fair. A hot Venus like world with multiple uh, in the multi gigapascals. Its atmosphere hides a barren and desolate world where it rains constant sulfuric acid on the surface. There it is underneath. Okay, nice. Next up, we've got Fauna over here. Yeah, okay, there's the Earth -like. A rich Earth like world with a very cold, average climate. Its poles stretch far towards the equator as minor icy mountains stretch far into the atmosphere. The livable areas have fluctuation in temperature that can get up to even 30 degrees Celsius at high points. Uh, it's likely due to the chaotic early system, it's gone through multiple ice ages. It also has a very high surface gravity. Around double of Earth. Excellent. Looking great. Okie dokie. And then there we have Temper over here. The only moon of Fauna. It is an, it is an only moon as during the formation of them. Temper crashed into the unnamed sister moon and stole its mass. This collision formed the rings around Fauna that remain to this day. Decayed but still visible. Nice. Next up we've got Curie over here. This is another Venus-like world. It is a warm oceanic terror with a thick and pale blue atmosphere. Below its atmosphere lies a vast ocean of pure liquid nitrogen, which is able to exist thanks to the thick atmosphere preventing it from evaporating. And it is theorised that my, uh, micro uh, life was once existed here early on the system's life. Okay, there it is. A very thick atmosphere, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Got the ring system. Got some moons as well. We've got Aero here. Interesting appearance. Looks like it's had a mean smashed up and all sorts. All right. Um. When it was first discovered in 3309, scientists immediately began to realise it looked a lot like an old Earth chocolate bar. Uh, oh yeah, Aero, yes. Um, to complement this, it uh, makes interperiod uh, explorers hungry to this day whenever they see it. It bears a strange ridge on its surface, which is evidence of a collision from a long-lost third moon at Clyde Fit, also supported by the huge obelisity of the object. Yeah, it's a pretty bizarre appearance, isn't it? There you are. And the other moon here, we've got a uh, bowl. A small coloured uh, brown moon that is the cis moon of Aero. Its orbit intersects Aero but never crashes or affects it due to their resonance. There you go. Nice. Looking good. Next up we've got uh, Remnant over here. Remnant, sorry. Um, this desolate and cold icy world stands in solitude of its singular moon. Once long ago, it hosted life evident by biomarkers and fossil records found under the non-ice covered continents, but it sadly fell victim due to a deadly and mysterious object that once lurked in the inner system, destroying it from the inside out slowly before being lost to time somewhere in the outer system. There he is. Okay, it looks pretty frozen over, doesn't it? And then you've got the moon as well. You've got Ament. Ament. The only moon of Re Remnant, its orbit is eccentric due to the planet that pushed it out of the Haspel zone. It sits here to this day, looking upon the lost sandy beaches of a once lost paradise. And there you go. Okay. Nice. Okay, so next up we go to Renlen. Few theories exist to this planet's inclination, but one theory is the most common. The mysterious planet that 
uh, ravaged the inner and outer systems alike through its inclination and suggests other bodies were at play too. There you go. Very nice. I wonder if that naturally got an orbit like that when he was running the simulation. Interesting. For a million years. Next up we've got uh, Trump. Tramp? A dwarf planet left relatively untouched from the Celtic early system. It's been able to maintain a low eccentric or eccentric orbit along with its own moon and is very large, just under the size and mass of Earth. It's a miracle nothing interacts with this too heavily. There we go. Got a moon as well. Veldevor, the only moon. It bears a similar green and red hue to its parent planet, suggesting they formed at the same time from the same materials. Its surface has dust of emeralds scattered across its sandy surface. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. Next up, we've got Anode over here. An icy world of a strange secret lurking just under thin ice. This planet hosts a previously unknown metallic element and is extremely good for spaceship holes and weaponry. It goes a bright blue and so can be barely seen through the translucent white on the surface. Okay. Next up, we've got Chloe. So let's move on. Dominant gas giant over here. There he is. Well, there she is. Um, it is mostly made of chlorine in the upper atmosphere and trace other materials. They wash out the green in some cases. It has a small moon and a very thin ring system. Oh, many moons, okay. So first of the moons here, Neodesite. An Io-like moon with high concentrations of powered sulfur on the surface with volcanic activity peaking even more than Io in the solar system due to tidal effects. Excellent. Next up, we got um, Tilt. Due to a long-ago collision, this moon is slightly inclined on its orbit relative to the other moons and boasts an old and long-ago dried-up riverbed. It supports a thin and wispy atmosphere that is miserable at first glance. There you go. We've got uh, Gardev. A low-mass icy moon that was relatively unaffected by the formation of the moon system and has bluish streaks across the surface. There you go. Kind of reminds me of Enceladus. Next up, we've got Atlas. Another icy moon, similar to uh, Gardev. Um, it is very cold and more massive than Gardev. It's the final moon of Chloe. Okay. Nice. So now we are heading to Canus. A pale blue gas chunk that is half mass of Jupiter. It hosts a wide range of moons that formed after the Celtic early system. Its massive, or, or its inclined orbit, is theorized to be due to mana, which it still shares an orbit with and is... So its orbit is not very stable. So we've got uh, Seltro, the closest moon to Canis. It has a rocky ice world with some dark stone peering through the white ice. There it is. Then we've got Prism. Oh, it's losing material, this guy. Look, you can see a cloud of it there. So here it is, looking pretty nice as well. This body has a very unique surface of lush greens and pinks due to unknown compounds littering the surface, along with a very dark blue and red atmosphere that must have formed recently because it... Uh, Loses some of the atmosphere over time due to its small size. It's unknown why this atmosphere exists, but it could be from ripping another moon apart or from asteroid bombardment. Next up, we've got Aftermath. This dark brown body has seen heavy bombardment over the years and has consequently destroyed multiple of its systems over the years. Its surface still has the remains of these bodies scattered across it. Oh, it's like a graveyard of different moons. Oh dear. Okay, next up, we have got. Mana. So that's the one that this other gas giant has orbital things with. Here it is. Nice deep blue. Dark blue ice giant with a range of particular moons that leave astronomers stumped in some cases. Its orbit also intersects Canis and is predicted to collide eventually. Okay. Next up we've got Nend. A small moon with iron oxides across the surface which creates evidence of once thin oxygenated atmosphere. We've got Hashi. This beautiful world stuns astronomers with its incredible deep blue surface of sapphire along with a bright yellow thin atmosphere. For some reason, this body always draws the attention of everybody compared to one of its system moons, which is arguably more interesting. Got the nice craters mixed in there. So, what surface texture is that? Out of curiosity. Planet 1 and Planet 8. Okay. Next up, we've got uh, Saik over here. 
This world has a high or has a blue surface of higher elevation, including pinks and whites. However, most people seem to brush this off as just an average planet with nothing especially abnormal about it. However, past the appearance, it also has another incredible property. The planet possesses a magnetic sphere of extreme power that can fully encase the entire planetary system at once. It's unknown as to reason this, but nobody seems to mention it or even really care. Oh dear. Next up, we've got Cade over here. This world has a fairly interesting appearance at first, but most people dislike the world due to it feeling too samely as a last moon of mana. Okay. Moving on, next up we've got K. Bello over here. There he is. Lovely jobless. So there it is. A small, lonely dwarf planet with an orbit that is highly eccentric due to the gas giants' system pushing it far out from the inner system. Just a lone wolf all by itself. And then lastly, it seems to be all the way over here, we've got Luminari. Luminary. A rogue. The mysterious planet believed to be the most cause of the chaotic inner system in the first million years of the system's existence. It pushed and pulled planets out of place and threw many planets out of the system entirely. It has extremely high mass at 15% of the Jupiter, but it was once a lot more before it collided with remnant and traded mass. It was flung out by the gas giants. Scientists realised it was initially an interstellar object due to its composition. Ah, so it's like an invader, and it's still out there. Pretty cool. You see, it's like long orbit of swings in and out. That's pretty cool. And he said it fully runs this system, so let's give it a go. Speed it up to max. Let's delete the ring particles so it'll go faster. There you go. It does run very nicely. There you are. Excellent. See the orbits wobbling. Something's losing material. That moon we were looking at. But there you go. So that is the lineup of this system. So here we are. So very nice. Like a naturally evolved system. With all the worlds kind of generating themselves. There is your lineup there. Very, very nice indeed. But yeah, there we are, guys. So if you enjoyed this one, make sure to press that like button, subscribe for more. Helps on a journey to 40,000 subscribers as well. Again, a massive thank you to the creator of this system, Lion12, for sending this system in as well. And that will send everybody. Make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.